Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So I just got back from vacation and I've been spending a lot of my free time either taking care of my foster son who caught a cold or playing Monster Hunter Rise on my Steam Deck in order to prep for the Sunbreak content because I did restart the game on PC because I wanted to play on my computer and on my Steam Deck as opposed to on my Nintendo Switch. However, I did spend some time reconfiguring my Mew Mini with the new Mini UI custom firmware because I really like the way that the creator of this firmware advertised it as a way to get the UI out of the way so that you can just get right to your games. And in all honesty, Mini UI for the MiU Mini is probably the most consumer friendly user interface that I have seen in the whole last year of looking at retro devices and the firmware setup that generally goes along with it. And there is very little room for customization, but if you are looking to give the Miu Mini to somebody as a gift, or you don't want to spend your time tinkering with the operating system of a device, you just want to play retro games, then Mini UI is an excellent option and it has actually refreshed this device for me. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on how to set this operating system up for your Mew Mini and I'm also going to cover some of the features of it. Should be a fairly quick and simple video so let's jump in and let's get started. So we want to start by downloading the files we need from the GitHub page. I'll leave a link in the video description. And there are two zip files that you can download. One is just the base zip file and one has a few extras for systems like TurboGrafx-16. So it all depends on what you want to get out of your Mew Mini. If you're looking for just a few older Nintendo systems, you could download the base zip. If you want a little bit more, you could download the extra zip. I'm just going to download the base zip for now. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and unzip the file. What you'll get is a few folders and a readme.txt file. And I actually highly recommend you take a look at the text file. It gives you a lot of important information about Mini UI, specifically shortcuts and how to force power off in case there's a hang. And then some other things like what to do in the case of PlayStation games or disc based games. And if you want to rename your systems and all that, it's actually a very informative readme file. And I'm actually going to keep it up on the screen for some of the install process. The next step would be to get an SD card. I'm using a SanDisk. 32 gigabyte SD card because I don't expect to need anything bigger than that size wise and we're just going to use the GUI format program to make sure that it is formatted in FAT32. And once that's done, we're going to take the folders that were in the mini UI zip file we downloaded earlier and we're just going to move them to the root of the SD card. And that's it, we actually have installed the OS. So now let's set things up with our BIOS files and our ROM files. So the README file actually says what BIOS files you're going to need. So I'm gonna go into my BIOS collection and I'm just going to copy and paste those files right into the root of the SD card. We're going to be moving them into their proper folders later, but I wanted to get them all in one place and I'm only going to pick the BIOS files that are listed in the readme. Unfortunately, you do have to Google and do some searching to actually find these BIOS files, but they're fairly easy to find out there on the internet. Now once I've pasted them into the BIOS directory, I'm now going to drag them into the system that they need to match with. So I'm going to drag the disk 6 one to FC, and I'm gonna download the Game Boy ones to the folder where they need to go, and the PSP one will go in the PS folder. 
And that's it, BIOS files are installed. So now let's take a look at where our ROMs go. So if we go into the ROM directory, you're going to see a bunch of folders for each system that MiniUI plays. So we're just going to select some ROMs and we're going to put them in their respective folder. So I'm gonna put the Game Boy ones under Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance ones under GBA, and so on and so forth. We don't need to worry about copying over or scraping box art because we don't need it for this operating system. We just need our BIOS files and our ROM files. Now one thing to note about PlayStation games, I wouldn't put heavy hitters in this device, but 2D games and lightweight games should play just fine on the Mew Mini. Now the readme says to put a folder with bin and Q files into the PlayStation folder and as long as the folder name matches the name of the bin and Q, it should just boot right into the game with no problem. But you can also use CHD and PBP files if you have those as well. So I'm going to try a bunch of different things. I'm going to use some bin and Q files and I'm going to throw a couple of CHD files in as well. And you can see here with Castlevania, if you have a Q file and you open it up in Notepad, it actually gives you a list of the bin files that will run when you open up the Q file. So this is good for multi-disc games. And if you have multi-disc games in CHD format, then you can also create an M3U file and place it in the same directory as the CHD, and it should recognize the M3U files. Disc-based games can get very tricky on retro devices just due to the fact that some of the games have more than one disc, but MiniUI does seem to be promising to streamline that process. And that's it, we got our BIOS files, we got our ROM files, so let's go ahead and put this SD card in the system and boot up the Mew Mini. And the nice part about Mini UI is you don't have to make sure the stock operating system is updated, you could just throw the SD card in, and within five seconds or so, you will get a boot right into the Mini UI interface. And you could see it's a very simple interface. You just have your list of systems you have recently played, and you have options for sleep mode and opening these folders. And if you go into a folder to your list of games, you'll notice that all of the file naming conventions for the no intro ROM sets are actually streamlined to just the title of the game. They took all that other nonsense out. So now let's go ahead and jump into Mega Man 3. And you could see the game doesn't fill the whole screen and they're using some type of like CRT scan line filter here. So it looks okay, but it's not taking full effect of this small 2.8 inch screen. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that now. Let's go ahead and hit the menu button and let's go into advanced. And from there, we're gonna go into options and audio and video, and let's just change the screen size to aspect. And then from there, we're gonna hit B to go back, and then we're going to save config. And then we're going to go to save global config. And what that will do is it will save the screen configuration for all NES games. So you won't have to go back in and change this every time you boot into a game. However, you will have to change the aspect ratio for every system. Now there are a couple of other nifty little features about Mini UI here. So let's say I'm in the middle of playing Mega Man 3 here and I need to stop playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit menu and then I'm going to hit save to make a save state. And then we can go ahead and actually exit out of the game. Now you'll notice when I hover over Mega Man 3 again, there is an option to hit X to resume. And if I click that, it actually just picks me up right where I left off. But that's not my only option. I can also hold down the power button at the top and it will create a quick save and power off the device. And then when I go and turn the device back on, it will just boot me right into the game that I was playing right where I left off.
And so with Mini UI, this actually not only makes this system travel friendly, but it also makes it consumer friendly because now I could just hand this off to somebody and just tell them, hold the power button when you're done and you're not going to break anything. Now the three Game Boy systems do require a little tweaking just to get them optimized and this is totally up to you if you want to customize your system this way. But here's how I feel the best way to get a good Game Boy picture when you're playing these portable systems. We'll go into audio and video and change the screen size to aspect like we did with NES. But then if we go into emulator options, there's a whole bunch of different colorization effects that you can actually apply to your Game Boy ROMs. So I was looking around at some of the best internal palettes and Retro Game Core suggests using Special One. So we're going to give that a try as well. But then we're also going to go into Next Page and we're going to set boot logo to enabled. And that's just a personal preference for me. I like to see the BIOS boot up when I boot a Game Boy game. And then let's go ahead and save global config. And then if we exit Dr. Mario and go back in, you're gonna see the BIOS is going to boot up. And Special One does seem to provide a pretty nostalgic looking green. It's not overpowering. And it's not a dark, dark green like the original systems were, but it is still a nice nostalgic looking colorization and it does look really good for original Game Boy games. Now I did go digging through the emulator options to see if there was something for Super Game Boy Enhanced Games to show their color and I just couldn't find anything so... As of right now, I'm going to say that you can't get Super Game Boy enhancements on Game Boy games and you'll have to play them in original Game Boy colorization if you decide you want to use Mini UI. And the last time I did a video on the Miu Mini, I put Onion OS on this device and there is a special section of Onion OS to give you that Super Game Boy enhanced colorization. So if that's important to you, you may want to check out that video and put Onion OS on your Miu Mini instead. But if there is a way to activate these enhancements, let me know in the comments below. For Game Boy Advance, all I did was enable the BIOS boot screen because I wanted to see the Game Boy boot logo. And then I set the video to aspect just like I did earlier. And once I did that, Game Boy Advance was good to go. And same thing with Game Boy Color. I enabled the BIOS boot screen and I set the video to aspect. And that was literally all I had to do to get these systems up and running and they look really nice. Now some other videos said that you needed to turn frame skip to auto in order to get some SNES games like Yoshi's Island to work smoothly on Mini UI and on the Miu Mini, but there must have been some optimizations made under the hood since those videos were published because I didn't have to set anything to get Yoshi's Island to work smoothly. I'm actually going to let this play for a few seconds and if you see any frames dropping or some audio stuttering let me know in the comments below but I didn't notice it. It looks like it's working great. I even tried Super Mario RPG and this is another heavy hitter that's kind of hard to emulate and this seemed to be working fine as well. I even got my hands on a translated version of the original Live Alive game for the Super Nintendo. This is being remade for Switch. 
and it's coming out for the first time outside of Japan, so I wanted to take a look at the original because I had played the demo on my Switch on the flight home, and after playing this original version, I can definitely see that they are doing a very faithful remake with proper translations and all that. That said, the original version is still very fun, and if you want to play some of the original story before the remake comes out on the 22nd, the Miu Mini is definitely a viable way to do that. I can't link to the ROM, but I will link to the translation in the video description. And finally, for PlayStation 1, if you set up your folders and your bin and queue files properly, then... Mini UI will just boot into the game like with Castlevania here. And Symphony of the Night is an example of a PlayStation 1 game that will play very well on this device because it's pretty easy to emulate. Now, just as an example, I want to go into Mega Man X4 here because with the Mega Man X games, I did not make sure that the file names were all the same as the folder. You still had that USA tag at the end. And same with Saga Frontier. So you notice if you do that, it actually opens up a folder with the bin and queue. And you could still boot up the queue file and it will run properly. But you'll have to change the name of the files and the folder to match if you don't want that extra step of going in the folder. However, we put Legend of Mana on here as a CHD file. And you'll notice it booted right into the game and it runs just fine. And I went into the Mega Man X4 folder and I booted up the .q file and that worked fine too. However, if you don't want to have to go into the folder, then you are going to just have to make sure that all of your file names match. Your folder, your bin, and your queue. And you might have to go in and edit the .q file as well, but it's probably best just to change the folder name instead and just make sure that the folder matches the file so that way you're not accidentally messing anything up. Alright, that'll wrap things up for this video. Mini UI is a very intuitive and very quick and streamlined operating system that really is just meant to get you playing. And you'll notice that there's very little tweaking that you actually have to do. So you'll spend less time tinkering with this device and more time playing your games. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you prefer mini UI or do you want something with a little bit more customization like Onion OS? And please feel free to continue the conversation in the Budget Aquaman Discord. Link will be in the video description. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now and don't stop believing.